welcome to the class on v curves and i know that v curves are such interesting matter now how we are going to develop this v curves and i know that v curves are such interesting matter that we are going to see by conducting the sort of test and such interesting matter this is a circuit diagram for v curves and i know that v curves are such interesting matter this is a three phase supply the three phase supply is given to the scatter winding of the synchronous motor through the tps circuit here we connect a one voltmeter to measure the voltage here we connect a one ammeter to measure the how much current is taken by the scatter winding of synchronous motor here we connected the two watt meter to measure how much power is taken by the synchronous motor this is the scatter winding of the synchronous motor this is the field winding of synchronous motor for the field winding we had applied the regulated dc voltage that's why here we kept a one rheostat in a potential divider mode here we kept a one ammeter to measure the how much field current here we are given the dc circuit so without giving the dc excitation to the rotor of a synchronous motor first we had applied the three phase supply by closing the tps circuit so the rotating magnetic field is creating from the scatter winding by external means and rotate the rotor in the same direction of the scatter field near to the synchronous field and give the field excitation to the rotor of the synchronous motor through this potential divider so the flux will be creating from the rotor that is synchronizing with the scatter flux so the rotor also will be running at a synchronous by changing the potential divider the field current which is passing through the synchronous motor will be changed by changing the field current synchronous motor you have to note down the readings of voltmeter ammeter and watt in this manner i have to take the readings up to the 10 to 15 reading we are conducting the test on the no load only in a similar manner we can conduct the same test on an off load as well as full load also this is the table which we exactly we got the values in the laboratory this if you, now we are going to see the first reading this is the ammeter reading this is the voltmeter reading this is the field current this is the wattmeter 1 reading this is the wattmeter 2 reading sum of these two gives the power here we have taken the 4 is nothing but a multiplication factor now the cos phi equal to nothing but power factor of synchronous motor that is the power divided by the root 3 vl il so we are getting a different value now we take the armature current this is nothing but armature current this is the field current if we take the field current and the x axis and armature current on y axis this is the readings we got at no load we are getting this type of at no load the same experiment if you repeat at the off load we are getting the this type of curve. the shape of this graph is like a v curve as the load on the motor is increases if we conduct the test the v curve will be shifted upward this red dot line is nothing but uv power factor so before this line this is under excitation above this line this is over excitation. nothing but in this mode of operation of a motor if you apply the field current it is operating as a lagging power factor nothing but a motor is accepting its reactive power if we change the if we maintain the field current of a motor more than this dotted line nothing but the motor will be operating as a leading power factor synchronous motor can able to give the reactive power to the remaining thing. this is a curve drawn between the field current as well as the power factor here we know the value of power factor as well as we you know the values of the field current now to take the field current on the x axis power factor on the y axis we draw a graph may show that in inverted v curve now here what we have to remember is that v curves are nothing but it is a curve drawn between the field current and armature current inverted v curve is nothing but it is a curve drawn between the field current to the power factor of a synchronous motor synchronous condenser condenser is nothing but capacitor the over excited synchronous motor is nothing but synchronous condenser generally we are using a synchronous condenser in power system to improve the power factor of the overall this is a three phase ac load so whenever you are saying the ac load it requires both real power and reactive power that should be given by the supply which is connected here so when we are connecting the inductive load here the power factor of the load will be very very less nothing but the reactive component current will be dominating the reactive power also should be given by the supply one now in power system what we are doing is by means of synchronous condenser that is connected across the load so the over excited synchronous condenser will be operating as a leading power factor nothing but it can able to give the reactive power to the system that will be taken by the load so the net reactive power supplied by the supply will be decreased but the active power should be supplied by only the supply only if you see with respect to the supply the real power is same but the reactive power supplied by the supply will be decreased the so locally the synchronous condenser is giving a reactive power to the load so the power factor of the supply will be increased that we are going to see in the phase diagram this is the voltage we have taken 
statue. This current you know, taken is the lagging power factor. The angle between the voltage and IL is the theta L. This angle is depending upon the how much uh, AC load we connected. This is a phasor diagram without the synchronous condenser. Whenever we connect a synchronous condenser across the load, it will take the leading current. So it is taking the leading current of pi m, which is theta L. Now, if you find the phasor sum of pi m and I l, which gives the resultant current I, the angle between the voltage and I will be decreased, such that the power factor overall will be increased. These are the different curves of a synchronous condenser. This is under excitation, this is over excitation, this is unity power factor line at a different loaded condition on the synchronous condenser. This is at no load, this is at off 3 by 4 load, this is off load, this is a full load. As the load on the synchronous condenser is Increases if you change the field current, the V curve will be shifted upward. On the x axis, we have taken the field current, and the y axis, we have taken armature current, so that we are getting the V curve. Merits and demerits of synchronous connection. This is the actual circuit diagram by means of which we can improve the power factor of the load by conducting the synchronous condenser. So, without the synchronous condenser, also we can improve the power factor of the overall system by connecting the three capacitors in the delta. This delta connected capacitor is connected across three phase load. The capacitor also will be leading reactive power, nothing but it is giving a reactive power to the system. So, the overall power factor will be now, if we compare these two, for a particular value of the load, by means of a capacitor bank, we can improve the overall power factor of the system in steps two only. But if you use the synchronous condenser to improve the power factor of the system, means stepless control. But it is a rotating machine, so the exchange of the system will be very, very lesser when compared to the static capacitor. Moreover, in a power system, generally we are using the static capacitor to improve the power factor less than the 500 kV. If more than the 500 kV reactive power is required, then we are going for the synchronous condenser only. The more economical for low rating of the KV capacitor bank, the more economical for a high rating of the KV that is the 500 kV greater than the 500 kV. In a capacitor bank, it is step control reactive power, it is a stepless control. Smoothly we can control the reactive power. The efficiency of the system will be more in case of, in case of capacitor bank due to the rotating parts, the efficiency of the system will be less. Moreover, the synchronous motor has a good short circuit capacity and compared to the static capacitor tank. Now we are going to see the different applications of synchronous motor. Generally in the power system, the over excited synchronous motor is nothing but synchronous condenser that we are using to improve the power factor of the overall system. That is the primary application. Nothing but power factor correction. The synchronous motor is nothing but a constant speed motor. Some loads require a constant speed also. By that time we are going to use the synchronous motor. The synchronous motors are used in a voltage regulation. The synchronous motors are generally used for the low speed high power load. The synchronous motors are generally used in air, gas compressors and a vacuum pump. Synchronous motors also find their application at pressures, mills and grinders where we require the almost a quantity. They are also used in the exhausters, fans and blowers. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your